I thank you, Father, for allowing me to pastor Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for the new families that come to be with us today. I pray your blessings be upon them. Uh, Lord, I thank you best we laid this morning from Colorado that lost her home there out in those floods and fire and are moving here and her husband's moving here. And Lord, I pray for them since she really enjoyed this church. And I pray God when uh, he gets here that God, they can find a place to worship. Lord, I pray, Father, that uh, you would bless the financial meeting tomorrow. God, may we see great things happening this year. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would, uh, Lord, bless all the ministries of the church. And, God, most of all tonight, Lord, uh, I have prepared, I have prayed, and Lord, now I need your presence. And so, Father, I ask you tonight to give us that touch of God tonight. Yes, we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Good to be in church, isn't it? Amen. Good to be saved. If you're not saved, it's a good day to get saved. Amen. Good day to get saved. Nothing like being in God's house and being a born again Christian. Thank God for that tonight. Running to men. Running to men. Uh, this first Sunday of 2014. There'll be a lot of people that say they entered the race today across America. But they won't even hardly make it the first hundred yards. Yeah. They'll be right back where they were. But for many of you tonight that are part of this fundamental church, you know the importance of being in the race. You know the importance of running the race. And you know the importance of finishing that race. Amen? Amen. My dad had a favorite saying when I was growing up as a boy. And that's the reason when I told him that God had called me to preach, he looked at me and he said, well, we'll see. My dad wasn't in church then. He, he wasn't until later on even in my ministry. But he used to make this statement, and I quote, he said, anything worth doing is worth doing right. Amen. And I agree with my dad. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. Let me say this tonight. The cause of Christ and the church and serving God is worth doing right. Amen. 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 I do believe that you can be born ignorant but you do not have to stay ignorant. Amen. I do believe you can be saved ignorant, but you do not have to stay ignorant. That's why we want to develop a better Sunday school. That's why we want to develop our better things in the church for you to grow as a child of God so that you can grow and you can be more uh, for what Christ wants you to be. But in doing all of those things at the same time, we want to make people understand that old time religion is alive and well even though you're still running the race. Amen. I've always thought a great church would be a church with balance, a church that would do things right because it's always good to do it if it's worth doing, but yet a church that would do it with an old-fashioned flavor. But what God is saying here in chapter 9, God isn't just saying run the race. God is saying win your race. Amen. See, the deal is you're not running everybody else's race. Right. You're not running my race tonight. I, I'm the pastor. I have my own race to run. You're not running Brother Woods' race tonight as he is a, a head of Bible college and as he uh, works in the children's ministry in the Sunday school. That's his race. You're not running Brother Harry's race as an associate pastor. That's a different race. Or Brother James's race. And, and you're not running Brother Dermot's race. That's a different race. But everybody in here has a race to run. And God says if you're going to run that race, you might as well win that race. Amen. 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 We live in a society today that says, well, just give them all a the price. I hate that. I hate that mentality. I don't care if it's your grandbabies on the team or who it is. If I'm knocking three home runs a game and some other boy strikes out every time, he don't deserve a prize and I do. Say the man right there. I'm sick and tired of living in this sissy society, in this society today that wants to give everybody something for nothing. Hey, listen, I don't care if it's Obama's day or not. I believe you ought to get what you work for and you ought to work for what you give. And I believe with all of my heart that we ought to run to win the race. Amen. 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 
Now, you might all would agree with this, and that's okay, because you do have your opinion. But let me say this tonight. Do you know what we do when we give everybody a prize? Here's what we do. We teach people how to lose. Because what happens is, is people get satisfied with losing. Why should I give my all? Why should I work harder? Why should I get faster? Why should I get stronger? Why should I do anything? Because honestly, I'm going to get something anyway. Don't misunderstand me. When Brother Jerry has to pick children on our platform that dress the best during our time when we have our, our different our things of the year, it kills me that every one of them don't get something. When, when we do things in life, I, I, I understand the concept, but I, I, and I know that, that this wouldn't fit in the modern day. Well, I believe if you cross the finish line first, you ought to get the first place trophy. Amen. Amen. God, when I was growing up as a boy, if you come dragging off the football field, beat to death, mud all over you, and you lost, our coaches didn't run in there and say, well, that's okay. Right. Now, mercy, they called us everything but our name. Yeah. Made us run, do push-ups the next practice. Worked us even harder. Why? Because they wanted us to know what it felt like to win. They wanted us to know what it felt like to be the best. They wanted us to know what it felt. And if you don't work hard at something, you will never know that. Amen. 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 Someone will look at me and say, well, it's, it's not how you, whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. So all you Panther fans care about is Carolina just playing it. <laughs> all you do Carolina fans care about just long as they play no I want Carolina to beat stomp, destroy kill everything they can, not in a sense of murder but you know because I get worried about that team that they might but I want us to do everything and if I talk to Miss Sandy back there what Miss Sandy's going to do she's going to want the opposite amen <laughs> Because Miss Sandy's a Christian that pulls for devils. <laughs> she won't holler something out so bad. She loves her preacher and she's trying. Brother Brad's about to come out and sing to her. But I want you to understand that it's not just about being, being in the race, it's not enough. Not according to what I just read. Right. Amen. Amen. Listen again. Chapter 9. Know you not that they which run in the race run all, but one will seek the prize. Now how can that happen, Pastor, if there's more than one person running? So run that you may obtain, obtain what? You know anything about English. You go back and see what uh, the subject's talking about. It's talking about the prize. Amen. The prize. Amen. The prize is the key. The prize is what's about. Run that you may obtain. Brother John, what an awesome job you did with that the other night. Amen. Brother John had me stand here like I had the crown that Christ was going to give and someone come to get the prize. Oh, I don't win a prize for God so I can run around and say, look at me. I don't win a prize for God so I can run around and say, oh, I'm something. Oh, no. I win that prize that I may lay it at the feet of the Son of God and say, Lord, thank you for letting me run this way. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. But you've got to understand tonight, it's your race. It's your race. Oh, that the plant, that's your race. It's your race. It's nobody else's race. It's yours. Nobody else matters but you. It's your race. And you are to run that race. And you are to run that race that you may win that race. That's the whole thing you ought to be doing. Now don't you listen to me tonight. I don't know what you're doing for God, but you ought to be trying to do it Amen. to receive the prize Amen. that you can lay at the feet of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is is that nobody's running 
hundred percent. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you a question. You got you you're still in pretty good shape, Brother Randall from Brother Night Run? Stand up. <laughs> Brother Brandon, run around the center section of Peeves. Go. Run. <laughs> Run, Brother Brandon. <laughs> Should have got a calendar. All right, stop. <laughs> Brother Brandon, jog, don't run around this pitch. Just jog, just jog, don't run. You can have a seat. Cigarettes kill me today. <laughs> Listen to me tonight. Most people in their Christian life are not running the race. Most people are just jogging it. And you know why? Because you've got satisfied with just being in it. That's right. That's true. We've got satisfied with just being in the race. Well, I'm at least in the race, preacher. I, I'm at least in. Friend, that is not what God said. God did not say just get in the race, but He said run the race that you may obtain. Amen. 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 Anything you're going to do for Christ is worth doing. Amen. You ought to do it with everything you got. Now I'm going to say this to you. We live in a society that is opposite of that. The mentality is a mentality of people who accept losing. Losing. Years ago, the Detroit Lions couldn't win a football game. Hardly ever. Thanksgiving Day, they lost years in a row. And I remember watching a ball game one time and their fans had a bag over their head with their eyes cut off. <laughs> they just got to the place they accepted losing. They knew when they got there, we don't lose, I'm going to hide it on a paper bag. Hey, we got to the place in our life where we think running is enough, but it's not. People ask me all the time. If someone would have come in this church, I'd missionaries ask me, Preacher, how do you get people to come back like this on Sunday night? Preacher, how do you get people to come back on Wednesday? How in the world you run 354 people on Sunday, you run 300 on Sunday night? How, how does that happen? The deal is, is that you've got to run your race. Your race don't need to be run sitting home on your couch. Your race don't need to be run sitting You need to be running your race. You're not doing this for pastor. You're not doing this brother. He's your brother Patrick. You're doing this for Christ. Run your race. Run your race to win it. Because the rewarder of the prize is God. And the center of the pace is God. And the finish line belongs to God. I don't know where my finish line's at. But I know this. I need to run as hard as I can until I get to it. Brother Mark Walter's finish line was 47 years old. His finish line was shorter than mine. What was he doing the day the Lord took him? Walking out of the hospital, visiting the family, running the race. Amen. Running the race. So we have to make our mind up. Are we just satisfied with the job? You know, do we want to run the race? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I have always, always, always loved, and I say love, not in the gawking, but in probably more of a, uh, you know, a fleshly love. <laughs> but I've always loved racing. I like racing. I love some of the channels that I have on my television because I get to watch uh, four-wheel drive truck racing. I get to watch two-wheel drive truck racing. I get to watch buggy racing. I, I, I like watching mud racing. I like watching sport bike racing. I, I like watching car racing. I, 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 I mean, I just, well, I just, I mean, I like racing. I, it, it's so in my blood that I can't get out. The other day, I was up at the motocross track uh, just there driving, just like this. I was at the motocross track, and it was a place I got hurt. Brother Hinks had called Miss Wendy that day and said, this is your social pastor, and the nut's falling and he can't get up. <laughs> and anyway, I was there that day, 
And I walk out on that track and that thing is, I mean, listen, some of y'all think shoes are beautiful. You, you, think, you think people are beautiful. I think motocross tracks are beautiful. I love a good, well put together motocross track. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I walked on that track today. I was visiting my buddy that owns a track, and I walked on the track, and I looked at them peaked up jumps, and I knew it'd take third gear, about three quarter throttle to make it over it. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, I wanted to get on a bike right then. And so bad, I wanted to get on that track. Here's my problem if I get on it with other people, I go crazy. <laughs> Because you know why? I can't stand nobody be better than me. <laughs> and when you're 49 and the ground hurts that bad, <laughs> you don't need me chasing 18 year olds that mom and dad to take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Russell, take me, we'll get in the woods riding dirt bikes and I'll get off and walk beside a man so Brother Russell can stay with me and, and we'll be going through the woods. And I never go television is one of the highlights. I love it. First round Supercross Anaheim. Next week's in Phoenix. I can't wait. Just watch the Supercross on television. And then he breaks this young man by the name of Mike Alessi. Uh, pulled a whole shot. That means the gate dropped. And man, he timed it so perfectly. He was a bike leap ahead. And then motocross, if, uh, Supercross, if you get out front, that's a good deal. And he won the heat race. Never won the heat race, you know. And, 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 and man, he was excited, you know. The main event came. 20 of the best motocross riders in the world on the line. They turned the board sideways. Gates going to drop. Michael Leslie done won his heat race. Can you imagine sitting there? And all of a sudden he tried to time when that gate dropped. And he missed it. And he took off too quick. And his tire hit the gate. And then the rest of them dropped. They all left. He was still sitting at the gate. He never got in the race. I think he finished almost in the back. Because he never got started. He never got started. Can I say this to you? You can't win the race if you don't get in the race. You got to get in it. And can I say this for every child of God? When you got saved by the grace of God, you got in the race. When you got saved by the grace of God, you become a part. You're running. Amen. Amen. We must decide to run. If you're here tonight and you're not in the race, it simply means you haven't decided to run the race. You can't win it if you don't get in. Amen. Don't get upset at me tonight when I say this, but there's so many Christian people that just never get in the race. They, they, so many people are satisfied doing nothing. Amen. And they never get in the race. You must decide to run. Amen. Second of all, 
You must be dedicated when you run. If you're going to run a race, be dedicated to it. Amen. <coughs> occasionally, I don't do it too much. I'd rather go do other stuff. I like doing CrossFit and stuff. But occasionally, I do the spin class at the gym that I'm a member of. And they got, y'all doing spin classes, they'll have 10 or 12 bicycles. And they have an instructor up front with a headphone on, and you know, they're basically trying to kill you. And, you know, you're doing a spin class. I watch these folks come in and spin class. They'll come in, Miss Wendy, I'm even talking about things. They'll come in and they'll sit out on their bicycle. Now they're in the spin class. You're in that spin class to burn calories to get in better shape. Well, that bicycle has a knob on it and she tells everybody while you're spinning when it's time to turn the tension. Because if it's easy, it's not going to help you. Right. If it don't hurt, no pain. I must have gained a lot in my life. Amen. But anyway, but anyway, thank you, Joe. But anyway, I'm I'm sitting there and I turn the dial on that bike, and when I turn the dial, it gets hard. So I push it. I've got a heart rate monitor on. My heart is going from 118 to 158, 159. 160. And I look at the lady up to my left. She's just. She never touched the knob. She's going the same pace. And I'm thinking, why have you been here? What are you doing it for if you're not willing to put in the effort? Amen. Amen. You're right. It's one thing I get on my daughter about. I, I get on anybody involved. I've been involved in sports all my life. I just don't understand people that don't give something maximum effort. I don't get it. I'm sorry. But if I'm going to do it, I want to go at it, buddy. I want to do it. I, I, if I'm going to do it, I, Brother Mike, I don't want to run beginner class. I want to run expert. Amen. I want to do it. Because I'm in it. And I'm going to take my time to be in it. I want to give it my best. I had somebody blow up at me in the first church I passed. Mad, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what their complaint was? You're never satisfied. Why aren't you happy that the church is full? Why do you want to get more people in? Why do you want to build another building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 why don't you ever satisfy? Can I tell you this? When you get satisfied, when you get to that place, it's complacency. And when you get to that place, friend, we must run that we may obtain. Oh, I know a lot of you liked when I ripped the 500 thing off the wall. And I did too. I think, I, I think I'm glad that's behind me. But I'm going to tell you something. That don't stop me wanting to grow a church. That don't stop me wanting to see God see people here get saved. That don't stop me wanting to see these pews full. That don't stop me wanting to see God do the work. That don't stop me wanting to see, you know why? Because I cannot just be satisfied with where we are. Then what gives you the right to be satisfied with six on your bus instead of 40. Yeah. Amen. Or with five in your class instead of 45. Amen. What gives us this mentality in our Christian life just to get by? Right. We just jog. We just. Yeah. And by the Lord, preacher, we're in the race. You know what we're afraid of? We're afraid if we run harder, it'll take more breath. Yeah. Oh, I'm not talking about physical breath. If we run harder, it's going to take spiritual breath. Amen. It's going to take the touch of God. Amen. You must be dedicated to run. Somebody say amen. Yeah. 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 Number one, it's your priority. <laughs> Number two, it's your pain because whose race is it? It's yours. Right. My wife likes to pastor me. <laughs> and on the way home many times, I'll get the same things and she'll begin her pastor speech. <laughs> but truth is, my wife doesn't know my pain because it's not her race. <clears throat> Though a lot of things she says, I know is right. <laughs> Amen. 
So you've got to understand that. That's like I tell, you know, and I use my daughter's example, I tell her, you can go to college and play golf, you, you, you're either going to practice, you're going to put in the time, you're going to hit the balls, you're going to work out in the gym, or you're going to come home and live my house and go to college here where you can be home all the time. Because you're not going to have somebody put you on a team and you give it half. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. And then I love how people want to whine when it don't work. Uh -huh. I can't believe I played like that. I can't. I'm going to talk to you about that. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Because you didn't put no effort in it. Amen. Well, my bus route ain't doing nothing. How often are you visit your bus route? How much are you working at? Are you spending more time on your phone playing games than you are praying and reading the Word of God? Good. And visited. You said, well, preacher, you don't know it's not my race. It's your race. You're the one who signed up. Amen. And if you're going to run it, you're going to run it. Amen. That's good, preacher. I've got my own race. Well, the preacher ought to know what I have to do. You ought to go with me, son. You ought to hear some of the conversations going out the door I have to just endure. You ought to listen sometimes to the prayer request. It's my race. Trust me, you don't want it. Amen. 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 I love it because it's my race. Nice. God put me in. I can think of nothing else I'd rather do than run my race. Nice. I love running my race. Yeah. But I don't want to run Brother Bullets' race. Nice. You put me down there one Sunday morning, <laughs> 65, 70 children. Woo, woo, look like bumblebees. <laughs> Brother Harry, Brother Harry, resign and go wash cars. <clears throat> if I said, Brother Hensley, next Sunday morning, you got to go down there and you're going to preach to seven year olds. He said, Brother Hensley, I love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know what he's saying? Ain't no race. I was laughing at Brother Matt yesterday. Y'all pray for him tonight because this could be it for him. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing. My daughter's back there playing some little Sims game. It's what adults do, you know. And I heard him say something to her. And I'm always listening, you know, trying to make sure he don't say it another way. And I heard him say something to her like, well, you don't have no babies on your Sims games. They have babies and teens and preteens. Then you say, I don't know babies. <laughs> then a few minutes later, she's got a pool in her house. And she's got another big mansion and all this stuff. And she says, my house is like millions of dollars. So I just look back at her and say, Matt, are you listening? <laughs> she don't want no babies and million dollar houses. You better run, boy. Hey, Amen. <laughs> you better run. Somebody asked me the other day, I was having 13 year old kids. Somebody asked me the other day, said, Oh, wouldn't you love to be 13 again? Praise God, I don't run that race. <laughs> Amen. I don't want, Oh, wouldn't you like to go back and be a teenager again? No, 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 no. Friend, I'm getting old and enjoying the journey. Amen. Amen. Never forget this. You go to the hill, you go faster. <laughs> It's your priority, it's your thing. Listen, it's your personal best. Dedication. Real quick, let me give this one back to us. Distractions while you run. <laughs> I'm here back now playing. Any boys here play, play high school football? Any guys? Any of y'all play high school football raising if you did? You know what my biggest stretch was in high school football? Cheering. <laughs> <laughs> if I like one, I might be out on the football field looking over there and watching the cheer. I'm just going to throw a pass on my head. It's easy to get distracted. When you're running a race tonight for Christ, 
you can't get distracted. Because the devil loves to get you distracted. Amen. You young men listen to me. God called you to preach. I'm going to take a choice, but you better be careful about the distractions you let in your life. Amen. The Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin is to so easily beset us, slow us down. Stay with me just a moment. <clears throat> if you want to be successful and run your race, you've got to give it your all. Amen. You have to give it your all. Amen. I wonder what would happen in a church if every Sunday school teacher had their heart. Every bus worker had their heart. Every pastor and staff had their heart. Every church member, every time they came, gave it all. See, it's your race. I want to Brother James. Brother James is talented, but I don't want him to leave this choir and give his all. I don't want him. I don't want to hire his associate, but I don't want his assistant. I don't want him if they would give it all. If this is a side job and it's not important to us, if we're a hireling, we better all get out of it. I think they'd all agree with us. If we're going to run the race, we've got to run for a prize. We've got to give it our all. We've got to do our best. Amen. You want to see people saved run the race? Amen. You want to see the bus full run the race? Amen. You want to see God bless you run the race? Because right. there is a prize. Matthew 25, as the Lord said unto him, well done, didn't faithful serve. Amen. God's been faithful over a few things. Amen. But James, you come to me and say, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to give you a story. I'm going to go ahead and play this swing. There's a young man that came to his pastor. When he came to his pastor, he said, he was at a meeting a few weeks before, a young fellow in the youth group. He was at a meeting a few weeks before, and in that meeting, he heard a preacher preach a message about another man that for one year of his life won somebody to Christ every day. That young boy in that service went to the altar. And he prayed and he said, Lord, will you let me win one person to Christ every day this year? He wasn't told his pastor. The preacher doing probably what I would have done, a lot of us would have done, said, son, why don't you set your goals a little different? Why don't you maybe try to win one person this month or maybe one person this week? He said, the boy scratched his head and said, Preacher, I guess I should have come talk to you. He said, but I've already done a promise God I'd do it. Preacher said, well, if you've done a promise God, I'll pray for you. At the end of 365 days, that young man had won 420 people. During youth camp, his pastor asked him, said, what are you going to do? Most of the kids here are saved. He said, well, preacher, doesn't somebody deliver the food and stuff? He said, when they come, I'll talk to them about Christ. Over 420 saved. Because that was his race. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Are you running to win? Or are you just running? Are you running to win? Or are you just running? Do you want the prize? Do you want to hear him say, well done? Amen. You say, well, preacher, I go to church. That's running. Preacher, I'm faithful. That's running. But are you running to win? 
you preached it well, well, my brother, I said, we're only going to lay down at his feet. That's what we have to take. That's the price. Don't ask you in 2014, are you going to run? Or are you going to run? This world is full of people who don't jump us. This world is full of people saying, Christ. What are we going to do? Give everybody a price? I got news for you. When it's all said and done one day in heaven, read your Bible. Amen. God's not going to give everybody something just because they got in. Amen. Read your Bible. You can't go out and hide your talent in the field. Everybody else is doing something. Amen. You got to run the race. Amen. 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 Stand our feet tonight. I want to encourage you tonight. Maybe like that young man in the song. Just decided, Lord, this is my race. And I want to run my race. 100%. It's not Brother Chris's race. It's not another church member's race. Lord, this is my race. And I will be faithful to my race. Won't you sit out of that seat and come down here and say, Lord, I will finish my race. I will do it. Brother James, don't say it. Because I love thee.
said a lot of books. It wouldn't be a lot to somebody for me to read this morning. And Dr. Chapel, great ministry out of California, started this few people in the storefront building in the desert. But today it's just huge, huge. He's still out there running his race. He's still knocking on the doors, winning people to class. He could set up in an office, it's probably nicer, most executives in America's office. He's out there knocking on doors. Back streets of the city, running the race. When I go down getting those prayer closets and pray for this church, turn the light on my little wagon, cut the rest of the lights off, and I begin to pray with a little light on from that wagon, Lord, just load our wagon. Ruth had the handfuls on purpose, I got my wagon. Every time I come out of my office, I click that little light off and I'm done praying, and I say, Lord, just load the wagon. Just load the wagon. Load the wagon. I want to run my race. I want to run the way. I don't want no preacher have to get up live at me when I'm done. One of them said, Boy, we worked hard for Christ. I don't have to do know I was lazy. I want to run the race. And I want to be faithful to run the race. Amen. Amen. So I ask you tonight, think about what preached. Amen. You're in the race. Are you running the wind? You need to be the best preacher, John Isaac can be. The best preacher, Brother Brandon, Brother Brandon can be. The best. The only way you can do that is you got to run your race and win your race. Amen. And you don't win until you cross the finish line. Amen. If you quit early, you don't win. Amen. All right, you go ahead and be seated tonight. She's still talking to everybody else. Wonder if she's going to take all the time they need. I'm going to have to change and put on my pretty waiters anyway. And uh, brother Harry, and brother James will take over service here in just a minute. Uh, if you're going to be baptized tonight, stand up so I can see who you are real quick. Wayne, who has to be? Paris. You got to do it. He's there. Where's, where's the rest of that, sister? Wayne, who's in here? Okay, just something like that. Okay, good. All right. Um, what ladies going to help me over here tonight? Miss Libby, go ahead tonight. All right, they need to be quiet while I'm baptizing and hear everything up here. And I and I, they give word of testimony if they want to, but they don't have to. Okay? Don't have to. And uh, I'll be doing that. And uh, then we'll be going home tonight. Um, be sure to remember, water don't save you. Brother well, Brandon's getting baptized like us when he's young again. He faced some faith, but he didn't get saved. So preacher says he got saved and hadn't been baptized. Hey. I got dunked in water three times. I was lost all three times. Thought it not. But buddy, when I got it, it wasn't water. Amen. Amen. Brother Harry, will you take over service for me and give Brother James Hammer? And I'll go back and get ready. And you're supposed to be baptized with a man, Brandon, uh, you young man back there. Uh, Brother Perry, you come on this side over here, okay? And um, we'll do that. Miss Terry, did you pray this dear lady? Uh, what did she share with you when she came up? What, what's, what's her name? Rebecca, did you ask the Lord into your heart tonight? Yes, sir. You did ask Him. How old are you, Rebecca? 29. 29 years old. You asked the Lord to save you tonight? Amen. Well, I know this. When I asked Him to save me, He saved me. Amen. And He changed my life. Amen. Praise God. Nobody ever had to drag me to church no more. I wanted to go. Amen. Well, I love to see folk come. And I always want to be a church that reaches people. Amen. If you can't reach people, you ain't nothing but a social club. Amen. 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 We don't want members to join with a W-2. We want them to join with a name written down in the Lamb's Book. Amen. 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 Brother Harry, take over for me, dear friend, and I'll go back and get back. All right, you guys can go. Fellas over here, ladies on your side. All right, let's all stand to our feet, grab you a hymn book. Brother James will come lead us in the congregational number as they get ready tonight. Sing it out that night. Let's all turn page number 205. Page number 205. Wonderful words of life. Let's sing all three verses.
Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, moving us to heaven, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful
Jesus in your heart this morning? You ask him to say, Brother Jerry told you how to be saved. And you ask him to save you, right? Okay, you want to hold your nose? Okay. Because let us faith in the Lord Jesus. I baptize her in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lean back to me. Amen. Amen.
Mr. Dean has been coming to church with us quite a while. <laughs> Faithful. Amen. 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 Four years. Turn this way right here. You want to hold your nose? Right. Because <laughs> Venus, so Venus, Sammy said you're right. I did, okay. So Venus made the Lord Jesus. I baptized her in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Father, I'm just a few comments.